Hi, I'm Nikhil Vasija, Senior Product Manager with Dynamics CRM, and this week I'm talking to Humberto, who is a Program Manager in the R&D team about solution management and packaging. Humberto, why don't you tell our uh, developers out there what you do? Uh, sure, Nikhil. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, I'm a Program Manager in the platform team, and pretty much what I do is I just read the email all day and I just tell people to go and build software, and they are so smart that they just go ahead and they just build stuff. Uh, so that's pretty much what I do. Uh, now, seriously, what I do is that I'm, I actually design features uh, for target audience are developers. So really, I spend day and night thinking about features, how we can make development on CRM easier, and how we can package all that and then transfer that across deployments. So that's what I do. Perfect. So, Humberto, um, you know, we've made some major enhancements in um, Dynamic CRM for developers in terms of solution packaging and management yep. to make developers' jobs easier when they're shipping uh, these uh, solutions. Mm -hmm. How did we get here? Uh, we got here because uh, partners just asked us to rethink the way we were uh, uh, creating applications for, for, uh, for XRM. Uh, that's what we call it internally, XRM, the, the framework. So we got feedback in very different fronts. For the first one is that developers needed richer components. I'm going to talk about uh, web resources later on, but uh, we, we needed to provide them richer components to build their business applications on top of CRM. And uh, we also got feedback that we had a pretty solid story for the previous version on how to initially create an application. But later on, when you needed to service that application, it was a bit challenging. So we also, th this time around, we thought about the, the life cycle of an application end-to-end, -end, and um, uh, particularly when you need to update a, a, an application. So how do you preserve customizations that the uh, end users perform? So we went ahead and tried to solve that problem for this release. Uh, so that's how we came up to the solution framework. Yeah, pretty cool. My favorite feature happens to be web resources yep. because you know now you can package different things, simple like controls, HTML right. pages, etc., and make them part of your solution. Uh, care to elaborate on that a little bit? Sure. Uh, just just a quick note on web resources. It's also my favorite feature, uh, which is kind of uh, challenging for me because I spend a lot of time on the solution framework, and web resources is a small part of that framework. So my team kind of like laughs at me when I say, "Well, but my favorite feature is web resources." And they, they tell me, hey, well, what about the rest, right? So we have these other, all these other cool things here. Why do you like web resources so much? And the reason why I like web resources so much is because they allow uh, developers to get very rich uh, business applications with very rich UI. I'm actually going to show you that on the demo, but we now support uh, developers to store and render things like HTML, SQLite applications, JavaScript uh, libraries on CRM natively, and you can reference that from a bunch of places. So it's really cool. And that works across all development environments? It works across all development environments. It works uh, uh, for on-premises. It works for CM online. It also works for even for the Apple client, even when you are offline, because we store and take those web resources offline with your, uh, with your Apple client. So you don't have to write anything special to make your, your solution uh, offline aware. We automatically do that for you. So what sort of solutions do we expect developers to create based on all these new cool features that we are providing them? Well, I foresee that developers are going to be creating very immersive, very rich applications, right? Both vertical implementations of CRM, like you can think about CRM for the educational industry, which is uh, actually the demo that I'm going to do uh, uh, later on, or uh, even uh, or small widgets, like horizontal applications, right, uh, for, for their CRM deployments. Before, it was very challenging to deploy these small pieces of functionality, but now with solutions, it's a snap. I mean, I'm actually going to show you, I'm going to build a solution from scratch. Uh, and, and, then, and then show you how that works and how that looks like. And, it, and it's a very rich application in very little time. Very cool. So why don't we go take a look at that demo now? Okay, let's do that. Okay, so what I'm going to show you now is the, it's the demo of the solution framework and some of the capabilities that we introduced in CRM 2011. What I have here is the vanilla version of CRM. Right? This is exactly how you get it out of the box. But I want to transform this into a vertical implementation of CRM for the educational industry. Uh, so instead of, instead of bore you to actually doing this step by step, let me show you the uh, final, uh, semi-final implementation of this solution. You notice that I actually customized the navigation, and I have a, a completely custom data model for, for this uh, solution. I have schools, school districts, and students, and I even have, I even customized the getting started experience. Uh, not only that, but I even have, for example, things like sample data that I can package along with my solution. You notice that I don't have any students here on this custom dashboard. 
uh, but because I package sample data and application to deploy sample data into my solution, it's all a matter of for the user to install that sample data and get going uh, to actually try this out. Uh, I want to show you quickly what are the components of the solution so that you can see the rich palette of components that we support in CRM 2011. Uh, the components can vary uh, range, they, 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 they can have metadata, it can be changes to the canvas, and I'm going to show you the web resources feature, which is the one that you really like uh, in the later part of the demo. You can even package things like plugin assemblies, reports, all these components are now part of the solution framework. One of the nice things that we also add as part of the framework is the ability to set something as non-customizable. You notice that, for example, if I go to one of my web resources, and if you look at the, the customizable column here, some of those I actually mark them as non-customizable. So for example, uh, this function, this uh, sample data host page, I don't want it to be customizable, so I have to do, all I have to do is to click on Manage Properties and set that to non-customizable, which I did previously, but I could revert that back if I wanted to. In this case, I don't want people to modify that, so I, all I have to do is to set this to false, click OK, and when customers install the solution, we're actually going to enforce that automatically, and I'm going to show you that in just a second. The other nice things that we added to the framework is that it is smart enough to track dependencies to all these components. So, for example, I'm using that, uh, if I go and look at uh, my entities, and if I click on, for example, the, um, let's see, the school entity, and I click on uh, show the dependencies of that, of that uh, component, it's going to show me all the attributes or all the components that are actually dependent on this component. Um, whenever you transport the solution between deployments, we actually warn you and we guide you so that you always include the dependencies that are relevant for your solution. So let me show you a more complete version of this solution that has even richer components. This is the same solution, but I have actually an add-on pack installed on top. In this, in this solution, I not only have my dashboard with these this two grids here, but I even have a rich component, which is this map, which is an HTML web resource that I include as part of my solution, and I'm using the Bing APIs to map all the schools in my deployment. I even have a rich application, which is a Silverlight app, if I click on the Students uh, 360, which is displaying all the students that I have in my system, but in a rich visual way. I even can, for example, look at the details of, in this case, me, or I can look at the details of, for example, let's say Harry Potter. The control is designed so that it, actually, it can actually display differently if it's rendered independently or if it's rendered as part of forms. So, for example, if I open up Harry Potter, right, and I have exactly the same control, but this time the control knows that it's rendering inside a form, so it's displaying it right away the 360 view of Harry Potter. And let's say that uh, we want to fix this. Right? We want to fix the fact that we don't have the right picture for Harry Potter. So I can click on administrative information. And instead of displaying a silver like control, it's taking advantage of being on the form and displaying a form section here. This is a native form section in CRM. And I have this other silver like control, which allows me to pick the image of the, of, in this case, of Harry Potter. So let's fix this. And let's select the right picture for Harry Potter. And there we go, we refresh that, and now we have this rich uh, silver light control, and now it is playing the correct image. So now, uh, one of the things that uh, I showed you before is how to set something that's not customizable, right? So uh, I'm building this add-on, right, the, the maps, the, the silver light application, on top of a base solution, right? So I already installed this solution, and I installed this as a managed solution. Uh, what that allows me to do is that uh, we now actually enforcing all the, all the managed properties of those components, so, for example, if I try to customize, let's say that I want to add and I want to mess around with your system and I want to customize one of the components that you told me not to customize. So, let's say that I want to, I'm just going to ignore this filter and say I want to customize, uh, let's say, for example, your ribbon functions, right, or your, your sample data, the one that I showed you before, and I want to change that and just mess around with your system. So, I'm going to add that. I'm going to try to customize it. The system is now, because this is now uh, building on top of a managed solution, the, the system is going to enforce this. And even though I added this, I'm not going to be able to change it because it's now going to be read-only. I cannot change anything. right? So the ISV, all the ISV had to do was to set that, and we're actually enforcing that. And uh, we even uh, 
do smart things now. Uh, remember that I mentioned the dependency framework. Uh, we can now even tell you, for example, you remember that we have this reach app here in the in the sitemap. If I look at the dependencies of that component, if I look at the dependency or where this component is being used, for example, the um, the, sam the student. Uh, let me sort this by the type. The HTML, yeah, this is the, the, the hub. If I look at who is using this component, I'm going to see that it's being referenced on the sitemap. Here we go. We're showing here the sitemap, and it's going to allow me to track dependencies. Uh, the last thing that I want to show you, you remember that I, uh, that I mentioned that uh, we can actually deploy this in CRM Online. We can also deploy this in CRM On-Premises, but also that uh, this solution can be uh, run on the, Outlo uh, on the Outlook client, both online and offline. So what I'm going to show you next is the Outlook client running this. So what I have here is Outlook with a CRM Outlook client already installed, and it's running exactly the same solution, but it's now running in the context of Outlook. We have the same rich experience. The same type of controls can run also in the Outlook client. So for example, the, the map that, that I show you, even the rich SQLite application is also running in the Outlook client, so we have the same experience. But the nice thing is that because this is now running in the context of the Outlook client, now I have the rich Outlook experience. So for example, instead of showing a standard CRM grid, we're now going to uh, show a native Outlook grid, in this case showing all the students. And I even can do things like, for example, uh, PMP used to show, for example, students requiring enrollment, or even take advantage of like uh, Outlook facilities like add categories to, uh, for example, to my contacts. In addition to that, Humberto, I think it's interesting to point out that now this application can be taken offline uh, as well, and it functions with complete fidelity as the online version. Absolutely, right? If I were to take this offline, even this, this web resource will also be taken offline, and they will run just fine, and, but now in the context of, of Outlook. So we have the best of both worlds, and the good thing is that I didn't have to write a single line of code uh, to make this work, right? So all of this just flows into the Outlook client. So we are in the in the last part of the demo. Uh, what I wanted to show you, Nikhil, something really cool that we also implemented um, in this version in 2011, is that we have a built-in integration with the with the marketplace, which is going to be called the Dynamics Marketplace. So now, uh, you know, you uh, I show you how to build a solution. This is going to allow um, developers to post their solution to the marketplace, sell their solution to the marketplace, uh, so that people can actually find it. And what I'm showing here is that the building integration that we have into the product, the area that we were before was this one solutions, but we now also have this dynamic marketplace right into the application. It's going to take a little bit too low right now. Uh, there it goes. And people can submit their applications to the marketplace. You can see that users can also provide ratings. They can also provide reviews. You can also click on one of these particular um, solutions and actually download the bits, install them into your CRM uh, de uh, deployment, and get going, right? So now to, to suddenly to turn your CRM into a new vertical, let's say CRM for schools, the one that we were building, it's as simple as just go to the marketplace, download the solution, and install that into, you, into your deployment, and that's it. This is definitely really exciting for our developers now that they can take their solutions to market worldwide through the marketplace. I want to thank you for your time today, Humberto. And folks, the D Dynamics Marketplace does represent a unique opportunity for all the developers out there. I would urge you to check that out. Again, visit us next week when we talk about other features right here on CRM2011beta.com. Thank you.